The North Sea, located between the British Isles, Scandinavia, and mainland Europe, has a very rich but often dark history. It's been the site of countless battles throughout history, including both world wars, and there are tons of artifacts lurking in its depths. So let's discuss some of the darkest discoveries made in the North Sea. We're going to start off the list with the discovery of World War II fighter planes. The North Sea has seen far too many battles to count, and a large amount of the remnants of these conflicts have sunk to the sea floor to be rediscovered decades later. During World War II, the North Sea played a major role as a battleground. There were tons of aerial conflicts between Allied and Axis forces. Many planes from both sides were lost during these battles, sinking into the depths of the sea. But underwater exploration technology has really advanced considerably over the years, with stuff like sonar technology and remotely operated vehicles vehicles are or ROVs used to scan the sea floor, underwater archaeologists have done a series of dives to find and document these lost planes. Uh, this is going to bring us to all the sunken submarines in the North Sea. Researchers have uncovered a series of sunken World War II era subs. The North Sea wasn't just at the center of aerial battle, but of course intense naval warfare too, with submarines playing a huge role on both sides. Many submarines were lost during the conflict, and as with the aircraft, many of these relics still sit at the bottom of the sea. Similar to the exploration of sunken planes, the discovery of submerged submarines involved cutting-edge underwater technology. Sonar scans, ROVs, and advanced mapping techniques were used to identify potential locations where these sunken submarines could be. It's fascinating looking at World War II artifacts, but there's an added darkness to discoveries like these because they remain exactly where they perished in battle, almost frozen in time. It's, it's pretty haunting. And sticking with the wartime theme, we also have all sorts of unexploded ordnance still being found in the North Sea to this day. Happening across a sunken plane or a ship would be eerie, definitely. Anything old like that with a dark story behind it sitting at the bottom of the sea has a kind of grim air about it, but unexploded weaponry? Obviously super dangerous. There are still unexploded naval mines lurking beneath the sea, and between 1945 and 2008, at least 115 people have lost their lives because of these leftover explosives. In 1960, the Marmara, a cargo ship, triggered a mine, being the last known case of a vessel being sunk by a mine in the North Sea. Even today, decades later, these mines are still being discovered, posing a serious threat. In 2005, three Dutch fishermen died after landing a World War II bomb. Recently, in December of 2020, the crew of a British fishing boat just narrowly escaped with their lives when they came across unexploded ordnance, but some did suffer serious injuries. Recovering munitions from the two world wars is a massive challenge. The SS Kelsey, a cargo ship that sank in 1946, off the coast of England, exploded during a salvation attempt in 1967. The blast was felt as far away as the USA. Other dangerous wrecks, like the SS Richard Montgomery, with 1,400 tons of munitions, still sit in the North Sea. But it's not just these unexploded munitions that are a danger, though. We also have poison gas. Yeah, this is another concern. Near Nolke, off the Belgian coast, Leaks of mustard gas from World War I munitions dumped after the war have been detected in recent years. The gas was leaking from munitions dumps containing 35,000 tons of unexploded bombs, shells, and grenades. They were mostly German weapons, which had been buried in cement-filled containers after World War I, but traces of mustard gas and TNT started being found on the sandbank close to where they were dumped. Getting rid of all this stuff is not only super dangerous, but also it poses a serious threat to marine life, but it needs to be done. Next on the list, we have the countless number of shipwrecks. Take the discovery of the Liberty ship SS Richard Montgomery, grounded in the Thames estuary in 1944 with a cargo 1,400 tons of munitions. The ship is very visible today, especially at low tide. Its masts stick right out of the water. Not only are these ships haunting, but as stated before, a lot of them are pretty dangerous too, being that they're leftovers from the two world wars. 
Wars, these shipwrecks can be remarkably well preserved because of the cold temperature and high salinity of the water. But speaking of shipwrecks, the Flying Heart was an East India trading company vessel that sank in 1735, just off the coast of Zealand, and wasn't found until 1981. And oh boy, what a lucrative find it ended up being. This was pretty much your classic treasure hunt right here, although I'm sure they didn't get to keep what they found. Anyway, I'll explain. Back in the 18th century, the Flying Heart was sailing with a load of riches. It had just left the Remikins heading for the East Indies when everything went wrong. A powerful northeast gale, a treacherous spring tide, and a mistake by the pilot all played into it, but the ship ended up on a sandbank just behind its sister ship, the Anna Katharina. The storm was relentless, causing the Anna Katharina to break apart. Meanwhile, the Flying Heart fired its cannons to signal for trouble, but it slipped off the sandbank and ended up sinking into the water. Everyone on board lost their lives. The ship had been carrying gold and silver, and in 1981, divers came across the wreck. They couldn't believe their luck when they saw the piles of treasure lying on the ocean floor, just chests full of Mexican silver and Dutch gold coins. This one is less of a dark discovery and more of an awesome one, but I, if they had to give back all that gold, uh, that would have been a pretty sad day. Next on the list, we have one of the many creatures that call the North Sea home, the conger eel, which also happens to be the largest species of eel in the world by weight, reaching up to 159 pounds or more. But they get pretty large too, reaching lengths of up to nine feet. There's some pretty cool videos of these things taken by divers, like this one here, where a diver starts feeding one fish. Just look at how it sucks the fish into its mouth like a vacuum. Or this video here of one swimming through the shallow waters of a beach. It looks like a sea serpent. One of the most striking features of the conger eel is its set of sharp, backward, curving teeth. These teeth combined with its strong, muscular, serpentine body make it a very formidable predator. They prey on fish, crustaceans, and even smaller eels. They're also nocturnal creatures venturing out under the cover of darkness to hunt. And during the day, they often find shelter in crevices and rocky formations on the sea floor. Ever wished that a place like Atlantis really did exist? Well, this place is kind of close. Next up, we're talking about Dodgerland. Doggerland is a submerged landscape beneath the North Sea, once connecting what is now Great Britain to mainland Europe. So thousands of years ago, during the last ice age, when global sea levels were considerably lower, this vast stretch of land provided a land bridge for early humans and animals to traverse between the British Isles and the European continent. As the glaciers began to recede around 10,000 years ago, the rising sea levels caused Dodgerland to gradually disappear beneath the water. The area would have been full of rivers and lakes and marshes and plains, teeming with diverse flora and fauna, but this submerged landscape remained hidden for centuries until advances in technology, like we talked about before, then allowed scientists to uncover the remnants of this ancient landmass. Researchers have found evidence of ancient forests, like preserved tree stumps, and plant material, and the remains of extinct animals like mammoths and aurochs who would have roamed the area. Next up is the Atlantic wolffish. Just look at this thing. A lot of uh, fish can be pretty ugly, but this thing looks downright mean. It doesn't help that they can reach up to five feet in length and have canine-like fangs sticking out of their mouths. Really adds to the, their overall grumpy looking expression permanently plastered on their faces. Their teeth are made for crushing the shells of crustaceans, mollusks, and other hard-shelled prey. And their bodies are usually brown or grayish blue, helping them blend in with the rocky seafloor where they often reside. One interesting thing about these fish is how they reproduce. Instead of laying eggs like most fish do, the females actually retain their eggs and the young develop inside them until they're ready to hatch. Once the eggs do hatch, the female gives birth to live, fully formed, horrific looking fish. Finally though, we have the North Sea Anomaly. The Baltic Sea Anomaly is a very mysterious object located at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, discovered in 2011 by a Swedish treasure hunting team known as Ocean X. 
But what exactly is this thing? A lot of the scientific community has chalked it up to being naturally formed, but there are plenty of conspiracy theories surrounding it. It kind of resembles a disc or a circular object with an unusual kind of structure. It looks like it could have been constructed artificially, either by humans as part of some military project or unknown ancient civilization, or of course some say extraterrestrials. The Ocean X team initially described the Baltic Sea anomaly as a round object with strange features. There are also rumors that they claimed to experience electrical interference when their equipment approached it. But again, those are only rumors. A lot of scientists and researchers say this could be just a glacial or geological formation. So yeah, I guess not quite in the North Sea, Baltic Sea, but close enough. And it's an interesting find. All right, we're gonna do a comment shout out time though. Uh, saw this on my top 10 dark things scientists found in abandoned places. I talked about bog bodies in that video, which are these eerily well-preserved uh, almost mummified bodies found in bogs. Uh, Michael Sternberg, 1597, commented, one of the earliest bog bodies discovered looked so well preserved, initially the police responded to it as a homicide, only to discover that the body was over a thousand years old. That is really cool, Michael. If I'd known that, I'd have definitely included that in the video. I love when comments uh, teach me something new. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.